gentlemen This is not a drill It's time for you to speak What you wanna see And if you with it Then repeat after me Come on Every time I turn around Blessings Blessings Every time I turn around Blessings on blessings Hi guys Well welcome to Great Life 684 Now let's get it Every time I turn around Blessings on blessings Blessings, blessings, blessings. Every time I turn there will be blessings on blessings. Oh, yeah. I see blessings, blessings. Yeah, there will be blessings on blessings. So our video is basically about people and the great life because great life is a new church, and I bet that a lot of you guys don't even know. Um, what great life is about and that it's a church and it's actually a really fun place to be in guess what guys i meant like a little beat for the drums it's like a four beat thing okay so it's <laughs> um we're david and debbie katina just coming to you through video to just talk a little bit about our journey um, we're pastors of a church called Great Life, and we are one church with several rooms across the globe. Uh, we are in Las Vegas, we're in California, we're in Honolulu, Hawaii, we're here in American Samoa, we're in Sydney, Australia, Gold Coast, Australia, and Wellington, New Zealand, Brisbane, Australia, I almost forgot about them, and also no, Melbourne, so. We started in our 20s. Uh, we had three kids at the time that were just babies. Uh, Debbie was a uh, head teller at a bank, um, she trained a lot of uh, tellers at uh, First Hawaiian Bank, right? Mm -hmm. I was working construction. Uh, I loved it. I love working with my hands. You know, we just want you to know that when, when your life is in God's hands, you that, you know, that saying, never say never, is so true. <laughs> because my grandfather was a pastor, my father was a pastor, and as a pastor's kid, I always said, I'm never, ever <laughs> going to be in the ministry, going to start a church, and lo and behold, um, we felt the calling of God on our lives in our mid-20s. 25 years later, in our 50s, um, we're grandparents to, uh, well, we're parents to six kids, three of them that are married, and then we have six grandkids, five five little girls and, and, and one little prince, um, which we, we miss very much. But, um, you know, they're, they're all serving God. They all love God. Um, not perfect kids. We, we don't think there really is anything that exists, such as a perfect family. But we serve a perfect God. We're just in our early 20s. We were both 24 years old. And so starting a church at 24 years old, well, David was a pastor's son. Um, I definitely wasn't. <laughs> in mm -hmm. fact, I, I came from a family, I had two set of, uh, where two set of parents had different different views on, um, on, on what a commitment to church is all about. So I had a mom who was pretty, you know, she was your normal mom, Psalm 1 mom that just dragged the kids to church. And then my father had a more liberal view, as like David says, at the peak of, of my career, something that I really, really enjoyed doing, and then having to to give that up so I could follow my husband. And, I mean, I when he shared with me that he felt from the Lord that we were to start a church. Um, although there was a part of me that really didn't want to leave my career, but there was also a big part of me that knew that that was the direction we were supposed to go. So when we first started, so we left our careers that was paying us very good money <laughs> to start a church from practically scratch where there was no money. <laughs> so that was a challenge in and of itself. You know, talking about those challenges, I feel like um, when you walk with God, you'll see that the highs are hidden in the lows. Yeah. Because when we were at that place where we were getting paid fifty dollars uh, a Sunday, you know, one of the miracles that I remember was uh, it would happen at least twice a month. Right. Yeah. Like, yeah. We would hear somebody knock the door, and uh, we'd go and open it, and nobody was there. But there's like three bags of groceries full of groceries. Yeah. And so it kept happening, and I thought, I'm going to catch this guy. I'm going to see who this is. As you know, one time I waited because I sensed in my heart that that was gonna happen again. And right when he knocked the door, I opened it and nobody was there. We really believe the angels yeah. were, were taking care of us. Yeah. We saw miracle after miracle after miracle.
prior our intervention, God's intervention in our lives, I'm a friend of mine, his name is Salani Ainu, I could never forget his name. He was the, uh, a high school friend who was a great older than I was, who had the faith, or at least had the, the consideration, the tenacity to come and ask me and my wife to join him at his service. And this was actually the Great Life um, 684 uh, church that had begun prior to that. And it was just something that when, I, when we were there and we heard the, the sermon, it just spoke out to me like as if God was reaching out and wanting to tell me something. And what he was really telling me was he wanted me to see that what I was working for, was it really worth it? Um, it's what happens when we try to plan things ourselves and we try to seek success in life without God. If God is our guiding light and we focus on him, that he is a big part of our success in life, it makes all the difference. But God has a way of working into people's lives to really bring out the best in them. You know, you don't need to masquerade around and hide the fact that we are hurting inside. You know, this facade of, you know, we're, we're doing great. Just look at our business, look at, you know, look at what we drive, look at the house we live in. It means nothing. It really does mean nothing. When you lose your family, when you lose your soul, when you serve the wrong God, and I came to realize that having to go to church on Sunday did not did not identify myself with God. Just because I go to church on Sunday, that's you know, once a week, it seems to say that I know God. And I think having to walk this journey in life with God there side by side, and I had to find out how to know God through my wife's submission, because God knows that He can work through anybody just to get your attention. And, and so He did. And my wife had uh, taken her leap of faith to. Stop trying to control the situation. Stop trying to um, to change me, change me. Instead, she had God do it. And the Lord really made Himself um, real to us, to us both. And um, I encountered Jesus first, and um, and I must say, it has impacted our family so much to the point of um, I just couldn't even fathom how good God is in in both our lives. Um, you know, I'm not one to submit to my husband, but the Lord really just, you know, um, really humbled me and revealed to me that, you know, if I wanted a good marriage, if I wanted to raise children in a godly manner, that I had to submit. It really impacted um, our marriage, our children, and God is a living God, you know, and, and that our journey through um, the, the church that we are in, um, Great Life 684, it's been, you know, there are struggles and there are um, challenges, but we're not we're not promised to you know a, a problem free life as a matter of fact you know problems are to try and test our faith so that it will become stronger and so i'm just so thankful for the lord's intervention in both our lives and just touching both our lives our faith has become more stronger our marriage has become more stronger as well and we just know it's the help of, of the lord because i cannot do it he cannot do it no one can do it only god can do it with the help of of the lord in our yeah. lives and so yeah i thank my wife and my my family and my church family and we know that we can't do life by ourselves if you ever were told that you are to do life by yourself that you can do it all by yourself and no one alone and that's a lie and i really want to let you know that you're not alone god is always there when you feel like you're at your loneliest and lowest parts you, that's probably when you end up seeing god because god's just there waiting for you to reach out to seek him so when you pursue your dreams and when you go to college or if your dreams are to be successful always remember to seek god first have god be um, an apparent factor in your life and that every day you spend time with him. Because sometimes we don't know what's best for us. And if we ask God first, God knows. God created us. He pursued us even before we were even born. He came after our hearts before we were in thought of. God wants your heart. And so for me and my family, we would we would we love the fact that we've spent our time in devotion every evening. Because we want to show God that He has our hearts and that we believe that He will change our hearts and those around us in however way we can impact to help them see the true meaning of what life was really meant to be. Everyone, so to you all, thanks for your time, and we hope that our story inspired you to remember that God's first in everything that you do. For God first. Amen. Amen. Take care. Take care. Bye. I've been attending Great Life probably for about six, seven weeks now. There's a new thing happening here at Great Life 684, and it's aligning with the new thing happening with me. So God led me here, and it's been a super great experience, refreshing, answered prayers, and Pastor Debbie and Pastor David are awesome and really, um, they really engage with, with the members. And um, I think that's really important that it's not just people talking at us, but there's a conversation, there's a dialogue going in there, a constant pouring into us, and also them, you know, following up and seeing where we are. And yeah, one of the biggest things I really like here is like life groups. Life groups? Yeah.
real sense of community for me. Um, and I think it has to do a lot with the life groups where we break off one on one and uh, have have the word shared amongst women. Thank you. I appreciate it. God bless y'all. this follow your dreams yeah your dreams never make sense but you know what um, if it's from God he he will cause it he will cause it to happen yeah you know we learned a lot of lessons yeah. and one of the lessons were and we still say it today we don't have wages we have an inheritance and that's that's the God that we serve for me um, over the 25 years the highs has always been no matter what the hard times were we always came through it and and that that was always a high in all of our lives there was struggles but there were also so many wins as we went along the journey i just want to encourage you whatever dream you have in your heart um you know obviously ours was to start a church that now is all over the globe um, but maybe yours is a different dream but whatever that is um, you know don't stop pursuing it just keep at it and never give give up because god who's the giver of our dreams i tell you you stick it you, you you stay in there and you stay believing in faith that god gave you that dream someday it'll come to pass it'll come to pass so we hope that you got something out of this video and and hope that you learned a little bit more about great life united we live in all day every day Whatever, Arya. No, Arya, say to Zaya, whatever, Zaya. Thank you.